Water is a basic necessity for living, whether for cleaning, washing or drinking. It is essential for daily human survival. On the program this week, I bring you stories on the various water intervention projects undertaken by Governor Darius Ishaku. My name is Nelson Eta. Join me as I take you on a journey to discover water in Taraba. One of the cardinal issues dwelt home by Governor Darius Ishaku at this swearing in of four new top class monarchs and permanent secretaries at the security threats in the state. And one of the actions that must be guarded against is the selling of ancestral lands to unknown persons by some chiefs. This is said could result to bandit settling in some part of the state. He advises the chiefs to always work closely with security operatives to track down miscreants in their domains. He promised to identify some traditional institution to protect the custom and tradition of the people. I also would like to warn that chiefs should desist from selling the peasants their land to other people without due respect to the law of the land. And also, no chief is permitted to give a large sum of land to anybody without reference to the Ministry of Lands and the state government. Earlier, Permanent Secretary, Bureau of Local Government and Chief Tensi Affairs, Belo Yero, described the occasion as another milestone in Tarabo State. He urged the monarchs to reciprocate government's good intention by providing quality leadership and promoting peace for development. We admonish them all to provide the requisite leadership so that the human and infrastructural development targets of this administration will be achieved. The issue of security and peaceful coexistence must be taken seriously at all times by all the royal highnesses. And myself, who has been sworn in as member of JSC, assure you of our unflicking support and that we shall contribute in no small measures in seeing that the rescue agenda continue. The four chiefs are Bondua of Cabri Awalu Amajunde, Kun Arufu, Isaac Ezekiel Apanke, Chief of Bika Ufeb, Joseph Samari, and the Pantiloyu, Beatrice Adamutajo. The governor also swore in new commissioner from Karim Lamido, local government area, Ishaya Obida, and chairman Katika for Karim local government area. The three global awards on water given to Governor Daros Ishaku by the World Council on Water attest to the immense impact of his administration on water development in Taraba State, which has elevated the sufferings of residents in assessing clean and portable water. The efforts have also reduced outbreak of waterborne diseases in the state. You have a very strong passion for water development in the state. There's really hardly any local government or community in Taraba State that you haven't sunk a borehole. And even down here in Jalingo, the ongoing 5 million litre water project. Tell me, Your Excellency, how did you come about such magnificent architectural design that is a compass of a water reservoir and a recreational facility? When I resumed here, there was no water in the city. No water. There was no water in the taps. I'm sure for a couple of months or years. 
not running water. This government house where you are meeting me, they were trucking water to bring here every morning. And that is the water I used for two days, they'll fetch again. I mean, there was no water here. The first thing we had to get our rigs, boho rigs. Luckily, we have some boys who were trained by Jaka. I came and met them on ground. They were trained, but they were doing nothing. And I say, wow, this is the place I want. Mm. I now pump in all that was required. I now increase their number. I now increase their training. So as they're drilling in the north, they're drilling in the south, they're drilling in the central. And we only go to do our boreholes during the peak of the dry season. Because when you hit water, you are sure that water will be there all year oh. round. So we continued. And I kept pumping. No matter what, once even there is no money, I force money out of the rock. And that was how we kept on. And we didn't sleep. And I was pushing them to breaking point. Fortunately for me, they were very good, hardworking team. And that was how we were. And so when the U.S. ambassador visited us once, and I, he asked me, that he has been to all the 35 states. This was the 36 states. And what he saw here, what, what he had envied that most states should be doing. And he asked me what he can do for me. Mm. Oh, la, la. I said, me, since I became a governor, people are, I'm giving. Today is the first time somebody is asking to give me. So I started praying. <laughs> So God, here I am. <laughs> the first time I'm a governor, somebody is asking me what you give me. So I sang for you. He said, you must be a funny man. <laughs> I can imagine the scenario. He said, give me anything you want to give me. So he said, it seems you have passion for water. I will help you. And they help us with a little grant. And so, and that is how we got into e-wash. And that was water, environment, and sanitation. Your Excellency, did the federal government play any role in helping us? No, that? no, no. Triple no. No one finding of federal government is in this water project. Mm. The same question was asked when I was in Dakar. Where did you get this huge money to build a 5.3 million liters of water? I said, I loaned it. She loaned the money? I said, yes. And let me tell you, the most difficult thing that I experienced when I was going to this water, Jalingo town, where you sit here, there is no basement water. There is no water underground. Now that it's rainy season, you will see all those streams filled with water. Give it one month after rains, they are dried like rock. The formation of this place is so bad like that of Nairobi. And so, we didn't, where you went to Karofi Field, where you went to the, the intake, it was a consultant who who did the survey, retired, he's in Israel, we trust him there. He did it 30 years, 20 something years ago. We trust him. He was the one who gave us the data. And you know, immediately we got there, exactly the point he gave us was stop water. Otherwise, the whole of this place, there was no water. The only place I could get a very large quantity of water was to go to River Benue, which is in Lao. That's about 26, 27 kilometers. I didn't have the money to take water 26 kilometers to bring it here. The next one, if you are going to Zing, once you cross that bridge, you turn right, uh, right as if you are going to Zing, you will see one large pond there. Yes, sir. Now, during any season like this, it's like a lake. So that was the other alternative because it's close to the city. 
But that one too will take almost like seven, eight kilometers by day to get there. When I gave the engineers the bill I got, whoo, exorbitant. Wow. So I now go, we went to Karofi field, we went to that, and when we struck down, we got water there. And that guy had told us that if we work hard on that, we will get enough quantity of water underground. All we did is to go deeper, create our treatment plant, create our reservoir there. That place has a reservoir. So we collect the water there, we treat the water there, all we do, we pump it now to the tanks. And God has so blessed this city that you have mountains everywhere you look. So we beautify it by putting some <laughs> tanks there, all, right. all the place. So once we take the water there, just like the one you are seeing in this artistically dancing uh, water tower, the water goes on gravity. Mm. We don't need to mm. pump it. Mm. We save money from power. SCC is one of the best water contractors in Nigeria. And they did a fantastic job. And they are doing it. You can see the casting of that complicated tower they are doing there. They did the same thing. But it's buried on the ground. Where the intake is the problem. The biggest work is where you get the water into the intake. Otherwise, all these tanks you are seeing all over the place will be empty. Mm. Mm. But they have all been connected, all of them. Even to some plots where there are no layout yet. We crossed this to, to Kona. Kona is like eight kilometers. It's another district of this town. And then we've taken some far away school, the University of Agri, to where there's no resident yet. It's just a planned land. But there are water there, already waiting for people to come and meet them. Your Excellency, thank you so much for the privilege, Your Excellency. Thanks. Thank you.